Climate change is having a huge impact on the environment. One issue of concern is desertification. In Mali, the Green Initiative has come up with a method that would stop erosion and restore the natural vegetation, all of which can improve the quality of land used for agriculture. Now that's how they're doing their bit for the environment. Turning the desert green. A large sand dune is endangering the village of Kundu in Mali. Sand is invading fields and smothering farmers' crops. The 25-kilometer-long dune also threatens seven other villages. But local farmers, together with an NGO, have found a way to contain the sand and turn the desert green. They're building straw barriers to stop the shifting sands. They are growing bushes to stabilize the dunes with their roots and planting trees adapted to the sandy soil, like the desert date, which provides fruit and wood. Making the dunes safe is an ongoing project, but the results are already being felt. Do you like that? If you're also doing your bit, tell us about it. Visit our website or send us a tweet. Hashtag doing your bit. We share your stories. Today we meet with Dr. Parsi Obatola, a director in the Nigerian Institute of Oceanography and Marine Research. We talk about how Nigeria's fish stocks have been affected by climate change and effects of pollution and what the effects of man's activities are on these fishes and their population and quality. So let's go meet Dr. Parsi Obatola. Nice to meet you, man. Same here. Thank you for speaking with us. You're welcome. The oceans okay. and the effects of climate change, how has it been? The effect of the ocean, one, is a privileged, is a heritage, but the activities is impacting the ocean and unfortunately most of human activities is impacting the ocean negatively. Let's narrow it down to our own waters in Nigeria. What has the effect been like? Because the ocean is like a sink that absorbs all the things that we do, all the activities that are done on, the, on land, it ends in the ocean through the runoffs and all the rest and all this impacts the ocean. And part of the activities that um, climate change causes globally is um, sea level rise as a result of the melting of ice in the North Pole. You can imagine how far the North Pole is towards here in Nigeria. Mm. But definitely, in Nigeria, we have low line coastline. Mm. So the impact will actually be more. We noticed that. We actually did a story one time on Ecuador Africa where we talked about the Lafayette community and some other communities that have lost land. Indeed, some communities have actually been lost to rising water levels. But let's look at the impact of pollution. I mean, waste management. We noticed that there's a lot of waste in the ocean. That part of human activity, or rather, that's part of human activity. How does it affect the fish stock? When all this waste enters the, the, the ocean, it mixes with the water. The fish digest it and it enters into the system. Mm. Now gets to us because we go out there and catch this fish and come back and eat it. So we need to take care of our ocean if we really want to have a healthy life. What's the way out? What are the solutions? What do we do? There's a lot we can do as individuals. The first thing that we need to know is that we need to take care of our environment. If we can start from a person, it can go up. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. Before you go, let me show you some of the things I was mentioning about. Okay. From the water. Now, what you're about to see in our next report looks delicious, but it's not your standard burger made of beef. A startup in Germany is producing Insect burgers. Yeah, you heard right. Sharon, would you be willing to try one? 
<laughs> Maybe it's probably packed with protein and better for the environment than the original meat version. Now, one reason being that cattle breeding produces a tremendous amount of greenhouse gases. Who knows, maybe all you viewers will soon be enjoying insect burgers yourselves. At first glance, it looks like a normal hamburger, but it's not just any old burger because half of the meat patty consists of ground-up insect larvae. Student Vera Buckelman tried out the Bucks Burger. A bit dry, but it has nice flavor, and uh, I would definitely, I think I would recommend it to my friends, yeah. The main ingredient in Vera's Bucks Burger is ground lesser mealworms, the larvae of the darkling beetle. The production of the insect burgers begins here, in the Dutch town of Ermelo. The manufacturers have been breeding insects here for about 40 years, mainly as animal feed and for the cosmetics industry. But recently, they've been producing more and more larvae for human consumption. Nico Rood is plant manager of Prote Farm. He performs regular checks on the quality of his worms. Around 2 billion people around the world eat insects daily. But it's still a big taboo in Europe. I think uh, in, within five years, it's quite normal to eat the insects. Uh, it'll be uh, inside as an ingredient in a lot of food products, I think. Um, so within five years, I think we all eat a couple of times a year uh, insects. The worms are a sustainable source of energy containing 50% protein. They only need a fraction of the space, water, and feed that breeding higher orders of animals requires, and their CO2 emissions are minimal. The larvae live for three months in these boxes where they consume grain. When they're large enough to be harvested, they're flash frozen and shipped to customers. Max Kramer and Barish Ozel are the founders of Bucksburger. They started their company Bug Foundation in 2014 with 10,000 euros in startup capital. Now the young entrepreneurs employ a team of four people. The founders first encountered edible insects during a world trip seven years ago. That's how they got the idea to start their business. When we first told friends, family and acquaintances about our idea, most of them said we were crazy, that there's no way it would work. In the meantime, everybody thinks what we're doing is cool. And the next thing they say is, hey, when can we finally try it out? They worked on the development of their burger patties for more than a year. The ground mealworms are mixed with peas, water and a secret spice mixture. The founders hope their burger will lead to less meat being eaten. That will be good for the environment because less grain will be used for cattle feed. And the insects are also climate friendly. At the same time, we're hoping we'll become a model for other countries. For instance, in developing countries where they used to eat insects but stopped doing so in order to adopt the Western lifestyle and eat beef burgers, following the McDonald's lifestyle. In Germany, it's still illegal to sell food products containing insects. But a few restaurants in Belgium and the Netherlands already have Bucks burgers on their menus. The exotic hamburgers cost between 12 and 17 euros. Starting next year, selling insect food products will be legalized in Germany too. Then the Bug Foundation founders will be worming their way into the fast food business.